<clears throat> Hello, thanks for uh, checking out my channel. This is Everett Triplett, uh, Bible Prepper on TikTok and Mr. Seymour and Everett Triplett on YouTube and Rumble. <clears throat> but I got a lot of important stuff to show you. The Word of God is so powerful and God wants us to know something because He loves us and there's trouble coming and He's telling us about it for our benefit. So listen up and check this out. <clears throat> Thus says the Lord, Ezekiel 7, a disaster, a unique disaster. Behold, it is coming and end is coming. This is talking about the end is coming. The day, the day is near. And <clears throat> it says, behold, it's coming. The day, the day has arrived. It's the day of the Lord. I'm going to show you where Ezekiel tells you. All who survive and escape will be all who survive and escape will be in the mountains and <clears throat> so uh, you want to be able to head for the mountains this says the silver and gold the silver and gold cannot save them in the day of the lord the day of the lord is what this is about behold the day and we saw the day of the day of the lord now i want you to understand something this is ezekiel 5 um, this, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself am against you. I'm going to inflict, I will inflict punishment on you. Uh, and it says here, because, which is always why, because, because of the wickedness, the deep state, the pedophilia, the Epstein Island, the, the wicked cabal trying to rule the world, the premeditated mass murder. But it says right here, I'm going to do what I've never done before, and will never do again. It talks about fathers will eat their children. It's crazy. It says a third of the people will, will die <clears throat> in, in, and perish by famine inside the, inside the city. And a third will fall by the sword outside, which is out in the country. And a third I will scatter. But the third who are scattered I later found in Zechariah 13, or Zechariah 13, 8. It says two-thirds in the whole land will be struck down and perish, but the one-third that's left in it, this third I'll refine them, bring them into the fire, refine them like silver, test them like gold. They call on my name, I answer them. They are my people. So this this is a not, they've not been raptured here. But when you go back to this page where it says, never before, I'm going to do what I've never done before, never again, you will see the mentioning of the famine, the wild beast, the plague, and the sword. That's very important because watch this. Here's Deuteronomy 32 where it says, it says, uh, <clears throat> I will hide my face from them and see what their end will be. And then it mentions about the fire devours the earth, the harvest set afire the foundations of the mountains. It's all nuclear. There's going to be, there's going to be no food. And here you see the famine, the plague, the wild beasts, and up here you find the sword also being mentioned. And again, it says it's a nation without sense. No discernment them. If they were wise, they would understand this and see what the end will be. Because it's talking about, again, the day of disaster is near. This is the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is always this day of disaster that's coming. And so then you go to uh, Daniel, and it talks about all Israel's transgressed your law refusing to obey you. Curse is written in the book of Moses. What's written, the curses and judgments written in the book of Moses will come upon you, bring upon us great disaster. Again, the great disaster is the unique disaster. The end is coming. And then it says again, the same kind of words, what's, I'm going to do what nothing's ever been done, like what's going to be done to Jerusalem. It says all this disaster, it says always the same disaster. There's only one. It's unique. You saw the word unique. Just as it's written in the law of Moses. Well, where's that? I found it. It's in Deuteronomy 28. Here it says it. If you do not obey, all these curses will come upon you. You'll be cursed. And it mentions the Lord will smite them, strike them with a wasting disease, fever, inflammation, uh, scorching heat. It's radiation sickness. It's talking about drought, blight, mildew, turn the rain to land into dust and powder, it's fallout dust. The Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies were being invaded by massive numbers and afflict you with boils, tumors, sores, and itch from which you cannot be cured in blindness, 
So you're seeing Daniel. Daniel and Daniel and Deuteronomy 28 are t both talking about it. And then we're going to go to uh, Matthew 24. Matthew 24 talks about the end. When is the end of the age coming? It says, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us when. They want to know when will be the end of the age. Jesus answered. It says there'll be wars, rumors of wars, nations rise against nations. These are the beginning of birth pains. And again, it says there will be time of great distress, like a great disaster, never to be equal again, like never before, never again. And if the days were not cut short, no one has survived. But for the sake of the elect, the days will be shortened. We're here. We're going through it, like I said. But it mentions the moon will not give light, which is the phase of the new moon. There's four phases to the moon. And the new moon is a timing information about what week will it happen. This is the year 2024 because you're seeing the nations rising. Nations rise against nations. NATO's rising. Then here's a win. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. Twigs are tender. You know summer's near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it's near right at the door. I used to think if it's near... I've had to do a double take on these scriptures because I thought if summer got here and arrived, we'd be in the clear for another year. But I'm seeing the birth pains escalating. I don't think we're going to see another year. It's not going to take another year for this to happen. But I'm seeing the new moon having already come and gone before summer. The next one's the first of June, first part of June. Summer's begun. So I believe it's going to happen in about three weeks. In other words, Time is not on your side to get prepared, get ready for what's coming. The day of the Lord is coming because God wants you to know about this because you need to get prepared. Get ready for the day of the Lord. It's coming suddenly like a thief in the night of no light from the moon. And I'll show you the verse where it says that again. I have all these scriptures nailed them. I got them nailed. Hosea 5, 7 it says right here. They bore illegitimate children. Then it says, now, the new moon will devour them with their land or the fields. Cities, you're going to level the city to the ground. It says, it says right here, when your judgments come, then the world people will learn righteousness. God has a plan. He's coming. We're coming to learn. He's coming to learn stuff. But we're being told when... And the wind is uh, like in the, right as summer's near, it's at the door, meaning the door, maybe the door hasn't been kicked in yet, but they're about to kick in the door. And so it's called the day of the Lord, and the day of the Lord is coming. And it says, so everywhere you read about it, in the latter days, this is Ezekiel 38. It's talking about it too. They come, Russia, uh, Russia Putin. It says right here, it'll come about on, on that day. Thoughts will come in your mind. You'll devise, you will devise an evil plan and you will say, I will go against the land of unwalled villages. I will go against them who are at rest, live securely, all of them living without walls and having no bars or gates. That's not modern Jerusalem. They have 40 miles around, around Jerusalem but to keep out the suicide bombers because they're not living at rest. They're not living securely without walls, gates, and bars. But in the, this is the USA. And it says, when? Here's the when. When my people Israel. It's about the people Israel, not the place Israel. It says, you'll come from out of your place in the far north. You and many people, a great, a great assembly, a mighty army. And my people Israel. It'll come about in the last days. We're there. Get ready. They're coming. And then it says, God's going to turn them around. He's going to strike the bow from their left hand, arrows from right hand, and on the mountains they will fall. They'll be given food to every kind of carrion bird, every predatory bird and beasts of the fields. You will fall in the open. This is what the Lord, the, the Lord declares that they will fall. God's going to set us free because the day of the Lord is in the book of Joel. The book of Joel is all about the day of the Lord, and it's talking about how our land has been invaded. It says, uh, nations invaded my land, powerful without number. That's happening right now. It talks about uh, farmers will be grieving over the harvest of the field. That's why it says the new moon will destroy the field. The fig trees withered, Matthew 24 says, leaves on the fig tree 
or come out. The branches are tending, no summer's near, it's at the door. It's talking about all the trees are withered. It's talking about the day of the Lord, and the day of the Lord will come like destruction from the Almighty. This is from God. This is God's plan. And it tells you that the food's going to be cut off. It tells you the grain's dried up, the cattle bone, there's no pasture, it's nuclear winter, streams of water. It says, it says the, the day of the Lord is coming, the darkness and gloom, a large and mighty army comes. Again, the same words, whenever you read never before, nor ever again will it, this happen in ages to come. It's always the same unique event, disaster coming, the end is coming. That's because people will be busy buying and selling. It says the sun and moon are dark, and then this is what blew my mind. The Lord thunders, thunders a huge explosion sound, like a bombing, at the head of his arm. His forces are beyond number. Mighty are those who obey his, his command. The day of God is doing this. It says, who can endure it? Then it says, this is what the Lord declares. Now return to me with all your heart, weeping, fasting, and praying. Rend your hearts, not your garments. Return to the Lord your God. He's gracious, compassionate, slow to anger. Who knows he'll have pity and leave behind the blessing. I'm understanding this is God's plan to straighten this country out, to clean up the mess, because we were a nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. But we became a nation out from under God, and this is why he's coming to re get us to return to him. There's going to be a big revival. This is going to fix the problem, just like you saw in 9-11. When the towers came down, everyone blew everyone's mind. But on 9-12, every church in New York was packed, all the people praying, God help us, oh my God help us. It's saying right here, it says, blow the trumpet, declare a holy fast, call for a sacred assembly. Because... Uh, you bring in the elders and the children, everyone. It's revival time. And then it says the Lord will answer. Let them say, the, the people will be praying, Lord, let them say, spare your people, O Lord. And says, um, it's, and then it says the Lord will be jealous of the land. I'll take pity on his people and he'll reply. I'm going to send you grain, new wine, enough to satisfy you fully. Never again will I make you an obvious corner. I will drive the northern army. It's the Ezekiel 38 northern army, far from you, pushing them into a parched barren land. Because the Lord has done great things. It says, be, don't be afraid. It says, be glad, rejoice. It says, be glad, people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord, for he has given you a teacher of righteousness. He's going to send you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains, as before. And it says here, you will have plenty to eat. It says, my great army that I sent among you, uh, you will have plenty to eat until you're full. And then you will praise the name of the Lord. He's worked Wonders for you. Never again will my people be ashamed. Never again. It says right here. It says it's the before the coming day of the Lord. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And it says among the survivors whom the Lord calls. That's the one third who survived. Zechariah 13. 8. I showed you that. Okay, that's a lot. A lot for you to digest. Play it over and over because like a movie, you see it three or four times, four, three or fourth time, you'll see things in there you didn't see the first time you watched it. Watch it over and over. Show it to your friends. Click like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.